What's up, everyone? In this video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 3, Chapter 11, titled The Heiress. This is going to be a spoiler discussion, so if you've not seen the episode, I would recommend not watching this video, because I'll be talking about the episode in detail as if you have watched it, so you have been warned. Now, this is the first episode of Season 2 so far that has not felt like filler, where The Mandalorian was on sort of like a side quest that sort of diverted from sort of his main objective. I mean, in the last episode, he was stuck on a nice planet, for about 30 minutes and I didn't really have anything to do with anything. In this episode he finally brings that frog lady to her home planet where she reunites with her husband and the Mandalorian gets on sort of like a side quest or another quest where he meets up with some other Mandalorians who end up saving him from these rogue pirate guys and he ends up going on a sort of another mission with them on sort of sort of like this ship weapons heist where they have to get some weapons get some information that'll help sort of their home planet and the Mandalorian will get some more information and where he can finally bring a uh, little baby Yoda, what planet he has to bring them to back to the Jedi. Now, this episode ended up with a whole sort of heist thing that went on on sort of the Empire ship. It ended up being kind of similar to the uh, chapter six of the previous season, that episode where the Mandalorian did sort of like this prison heist job with sort of those rogues, sort of like uh, bad guys or whatever they were. Yeah, this episode was kind of like that. It was another sort of like heist mission where they're on that ship doing a whole bunch of shooting, knocking out a bunch of guys, doing a bunch of fighting, that kind of stuff. Only this episode looked a whole lot better than chapter six did. If you won't go back and look at chapter Chapter six, which I rewatched it a few weeks ago. That episode, the ship that they were on, it just looks like so like glossy, just like so unreal. This episode, the ship that they're on, it looks like a movie quality stuff to where once again, you see how much better the budget is for season two and just how much better things look. So when it comes to this whole quest and this mission, this ended up being sort of a solid episode in terms of how things played out, but it did feel really short. Because it was short. This episode, it's got to be one of the shortest episodes they've done so far. Where it was only 30 minutes long. And by the time you get to the end of it, it's just like, wait, what? That's it? It's just like, wow. Only 30 minutes compared to the previous couple episodes we got. Which the first episode of season 2 was 50 minutes. And then the last episode was a little, I think a little over 40 minutes. This one, by the time it got to the wrap up, I was like, wait, what? And that's because I was looking forward to this episode doing more. Because this, this was more of a setup episode that set up some stuff that I wanted to see pay off. The first major thing that got set up was that Moff Gideon is behind the whole uh, Empire thing, which if you don't remember, Moff Gideon was the black guy at the end of season one that had sort of the dark saber. And so like, so he, ended, so he ended up being sort of the primary bad guy of season one. And you're seeing how it sort of comes into play in this, in this season right here and how the main sort of female Mandalorian, she asks like, where's the dark saber? And the Empire guy says, if, if you have to ask, you already know. So we see that Moff Gideon, he's gonna be coming in playing sort of a role. He's sort of up to no good again when it comes to sort of the other Mandalorians looking for him. So that was interesting to see how that pays off in some episodes later on or even in, in future seasons. I'm pretty sure he's going to be back. But then the big thing that got set up and the thing, the thing that everyone got excited about was them finally name dropping Ashoka Tano, which that got announced months ago, obviously, that she was going to be in season two. We haven't got a glimpse of her so far. And people have really been looking forward to seeing her in live action and when they finally mentioned when that girl what was her name bo katan or whatever her name was that uh you have to go find ashoka tano i think it's just like oh shit because with how big a character she was in the clone wars what a popular character she's been in recent years because of that show to see how that's going to play out her coming into live action finally i think people are really excited about that the only thing i was a little disappointed about is that i kind of wanted the scenario where she just sort of pops up suddenly, where you're just like, oh shit, there's Ahsoka. But now we know that, okay, in the next episode, probably, that's what it's going to be. Although this does, does kind of put pressure on the next episode, because if the next episode, he's sort of traveling, and he gets on sort of like another side quest where he's like stuck on another ice planet or something like that, it's going to be like, oh no. With how this episode ended, or what got set up, the next episode just cannot be another filler episode, because I think that would really piss people off. They've done filler episodes before, but to do one now with what was set up in this episode, God, no, they better not do that. And speaking of taking off from that planet, when you see the Mandalorian ship at the end, it's just like, man, <laughs> they, he tries to get his ship fixed in this episode by a bunch of like uh, guys that look like Admiral Akbar, another Calamari guys or whatever. 
but you see how they end up fixing the ship and uh, he might have been better off just buying another ship i can't believe that that thing is actually gonna fly because it's just like put together with a bunch of like rope there's still like seaweed and nets everywhere they did a really crappy job with that ship and you see it fly and take off it's just like wow and at the end once again you see who directed this episode it was Bryce Dallas Howard. For people who don't know, she's the girl, she's the redhead who plays Claire in the Jurassic Park movies or the Jurassic World movies. And she was Gwen Stacy in Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man 3, uh, the original Spider-Man 3. And uh, yeah, she actually directed an episode in season one. She directed uh, chapter four, which was the episode where Cara Dune got introduced. And then he went to that uh, sort of uh, forest planet or whatever, where they fought like the eight ATSTs. But then, which that ended up being a pretty good episode. So, so she's shown that she can do this uh, TV show pretty well. And this was overall a solid episode, but it definitely wasn't a great one just because I thought this episode, even though it set up some cool stuff, it was very short. And uh, you can, when these episodes, when they're short, you can feel it. Cause when the time it got to the wrap up, I was like, wow, okay, I guess that's it. And that's only disappointing just because you only get eight of these and to get sort of a short episode, it's just like, uh, even though you understand just cause the budget I mean, this is a TV show that isn't exactly cheap to make. So not every, every episode is going to be 50 minutes or an hour long. But uh, overall, it was a solid episode, but definitely not a great one. So I wanted to end up giving it like a 7 out of 10. Uh, yeah, this was more of sort of a setup episode, but what was in this episode was still good. That I enjoyed it. So there you go. On to the next episode. So that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching.